I'd like to use this physics example as a way to review solving a system of equations. If you recall, any system is an equation with the same variables. Uh, in this case, we have two equations and two of the same variables, x, which represents position, and t, which represents time. In this case, they are the same variable. And since we have two equations and two unknowns, we can solve this system and find the one scenario in which the position and the time match for each car. So there are three ways that we learn how to solve a system. Uh, the first way is called substitution. So I'll solve it with substitution in my first attempt. So in substitution, again, we have two equations, 3t minus 4, and we have x equals negative 2t plus 6. Substitution is really helpful when you have a variable that's already solved for. In this case, it's x is solved in both equations. So what I can do, I can take what x is equal to and substitute it into the second equation. And when you do that, you get a new equation. 3t minus 4 equals negative 2t plus 6. Some people will refer to this as setting them equal to each other, uh, which is exactly what you're doing. You're taking the x pieces and setting them equal to each other. And what you've done is eliminated x as a variable. And now you can do the algebraic step to solve for t. I'll get the t's on the same side, adding 2t. Uh, in the same step, I might want to add the 4 to the other side. I'm just collecting all my like terms. I end up with 5t. That gets canceled. That gets canceled. 5t equals 10. And when I divide by 5 on both sides, I get t equals 2. And so I know that my intersection of these two equations, or when they collide, will be a time of 2, uh, which they haven't given us units. I'll assume it's 2 seconds. What I'm also looking for is a corresponding x value. And we can plug in t equals 2 into either equation, because it's a solution for both of them. So I'll just take this first equation, and I'll rewrite it x equals 3, but now I'm going to substitute that 2 in for t, subtract there, so x equals 3 times 2 is 6, minus 4 equals 2. So my solution for x and t, or t and x, my t value and my x value, t is 2, x is 2. And there's my common solution. So if you were to plug in each of those values, you get the same, same solutions. So that was solving by substitution. Now, the other way we find that is called elimination. Elimination, we effectively added or subtracted these equations in order to eliminate one of those variables. And so we try to get them all in, organized with the like terms in the same spot. In this case, they already are. So I can stack them on top of each other and line up all the like terms. And what I'm looking to do in this case, if I can multiply the bottom equation or the top equation by negative 1, that would change all of the signs. And in doing so, I can add the equation and my x variables go away. I get 0x. And 5t, negative 10. I can subtract 5t from both sides or add 10t. Now it's an algebra step equals negative 10. I can divide by negative 5 on both sides. And once again, I get t to be 2. And just like before, I can plug it into either of either equation. And this, I might as well try the other one now. So x equals negative 2 times 2. Uh, plus 6 which would be negative 4 plus 6, so x, once again, is 2, which is what we expected because that was the solution we got in the first part. Now, there's one final way that you can solve it, and it's actually a pretty elegant way to do it when you have a graphing calculator. So we can solve it by graphing. We take both these functions. We open up our graphing calculator here. If I can shrink it down so it fits on the screen. I'll go into y equals. I've got a couple functions already in there. I'm just going to put in those same functions. I have, instead of x, and the calculator sees y and x. x is actually our y, our vertical axis variable. So I have 3x minus 4 is one function, and negative 2x 
plus six as the second function. Again, the calculator thinks in terms of x's and y's. In physics, often t is our horizontal axis variable, so our x variable. Now, when I go and hit graph, it's going to usually spit out a graph that looks like this, uh, which in this case actually works pretty well. It fits it very well. But oftentimes in physics, you're going to see variables that are really big or really small. If your graph doesn't seem to fit like this does, you can go to zoom fit, which is the tenth one, and it'll usually adjust the scale slightly. In this case, it does a little bit to try to fit those values. And we're looking for that intersection. And the calculator can calculate the exact value. Above the trace button, if you use second trace, number five is intersect. It's going to ask you, is this the first curve? Oh, look, I'm rolling around this first curve. Sure it is. I'll hit enter. Second curve, yep, I'll hit enter again. And it says take a guess. Now, if it's the only intersection, you don't even have to move it, but I can move the cursor closer to it and hit enter. And it's going to calculate it. X is two, Y is two. All right, and so with my graphing method, again, I'm going to get one curve that looks something like this, another curve like that. My intersection is what I'm looking for, and I can use the calc function to find that exact intersection in my calculator. So we have three good methods. Uh, once we get really good at writing these equations for these, these situations like the car, the graphing method, when you have your graphing calculator, is actually a pretty good way to do it. Uh, without a lot of the algebra steps. Uh, but we should have an understanding of how to do each of these ways, and this is a good review of that process.